contortionist making ice creams. At a stretch, it's epic win at 5.30, but now on BBC One, the scores are in. He was one of the heroes of the afternoon. Uh, applause from the away supporters. Go, go. The latest score is when we go through the refresh. John Terry's tears, we all remember. And the was too crucial week. Hello, welcome to a particularly busy final score with eight Premier League games spread across this Saturday afternoon. Garth Crooks and Steve Claridge need several pairs of eyes to keep up with everything. There was one lunchtime game, it was at the Etihad Stadium, top of the Premier League. Here are all the games that are taking place at the moment. Latest scores, of course, Arsenal 2-0 up on Bolton. Two second-half goals from Robin Van Persie there. Bolton are down to ten men. Chelsea are leading Swansea by two goals to nil. We've seen the good and the bad of Fernando Torres once again. The good he scored, the bad he's been sent off. Liverpool are two on up on Wolves. Luis Suarez's sublime effort among the day's highlights. Wolves got one back through Stephen Fletcher. Newcastle are 3-1 up against Blackburn. Demba Barr has hit a hat-trick in that game. Blackburn also down to 10 men. Goalless at the Hawthorns, where Rory Hodgson's West Brom are meeting former club Fulham. And Raphael van der Vaart and Gareth Bale put Spurs 2-0 up at the DW Stadium. Mohamed Diame got one goal back for Wigan, but they too are down to 10 men this afternoon, with Gahuri sent off after they got it back to 2 1. So we're going to head around the grounds now for you here on final score, starting at Stamford Bridge, where, as I said, Tony Husband, we've seen the good and the bad of Fernando Torres. We certainly have, Mark, and in terms of his Chelsea career, it just seems he takes one step forward and then immediately two steps back again. He scored here in the 29th minute against the Swansea side that were really struggling at the time. Uh, and it appeared this would be a pretty routine win for Chelsea. But then before half-time, a lunge on Mark Gower led to a straight red card from Mike Dean. And I don't think anybody watching or who's seen it would dispute the decision of the referee to send him straight off. By that point, Ramirez had doubled the advantage. It was 2-0 and Chelsea in total control. Facing ten men, of course, Swansea have rallied after the break. Nathan Dyer's shot hitting the bar. Ashley Williams going close from a corner. But Nicholas and Elka at the other end for Chelsea has hit the woodwork too. Uh, Swansea trying to force a way back into the game. They are starting to fade somewhat, so these could be crucial last stages for them, but they're 2-0 down. Morecambe had the tightest defence in League Two going into today's game. They've only conceded five in nine. They've conceded three this afternoon to Paul Buckles, Bristol Rovers. The leaders behind three goals to two. It's Crew one, Port Vale one, and Brentford, who are going for a fourth successive away win in League One, uh, are two 0 up on Oldham through Miles Weston. And Gary Medine now has nine for the season for Sheffield Wednesday. They have a hundred percent. Uh, record at home in League One. The only side in that division to do so. They are 3-0 up on Exeter. The first half at the Emirates wasn't particularly comfortable for Arsenal. The second half, much more so. Jonathan Ledyard. Just forget the first half, all right, because all Arsenal's frailties and failings were on view. Bolton were more than a handful. But then seconds after the restart, all changed. Robin van Persie settled the nerves, his 99th goal for Arsenal. Bolton had David Wheater sent off for tugging back Theo Walcott. And Arsenal have been stretching their opponents as only they can. Beautiful football, Walcott, Arteta, even Koscielny testing Jasker Lionel. But he had no answer to van Persie's second of the game, his 100th overall. And now it's pretty much one-way traffic. Jasker Lionel on his own because the Bolton defence just seemed to part every Every time a red and white shirt comes near them and Arsenal attacking and almost try to score at will. A side with ten men has scored a goal in the Premier League. It's come at Stamford Bridge. Tony Husband. It's Ramirez with his second for Chelsea. It's put them 3-0 up now against Swansea, who are surely beaten despite the fact that they are playing ten men. Ramirez cutting in from the right-hand side into the edge of the penalty area. A side-footed finish. And Chelsea on their way to their third home win of the season in the league. Um, the Torres red card was fully deserved, Garth, yes? Yes, it was reckless uh, at worst. Um, 
Uh, I don't know what came over him. Um, it was on the halfway line. There was no danger. He didn't have to make the tackle. He seemed to get carried away. Uh, it was a shame because he really looked at that stage that his game was starting to really come back. The sort of tires we, we, we knew at Liverpool. But before Chelsea fans accuse us of being completely and utterly negative, is there an argument to say Ramirez is the most improved Premier League player in the last six months? I'm not sure it's, it's so much he's improved as he's changed slightly, his position has just slightly changed. Right. I mean, he's not an out-and-out -out wide player. He's playing very much a, 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 in a four. He was playing wide under Ancelotti. It didn't, didn't suit his game. He's moved slightly inside. He's playing in a three now. So he's slightly moved inside. And that's just allowed him to get on the ball and make runs from that position, which he's done twice already and scored two goals from it. And just that subtle change in the position you play makes a difference to your game. Outstanding today, Ramirez. Outstanding. Good second goal, wasn't it? Only play who go beyond, go beyond yeah. and make runs past the front, the front two or the front one. As, and as therefore in this case. he will get goals. And he'll get goals. There'll be space created. Yes, for outstanding. Him. Uh, to Anfield next. Could be an interesting last 15 minutes or so here, couldn't it, Nas Premji? Certainly could. Liverpool 2, Wolves 1. The Reds 2 up through Adams' deflected goal, which went in via Roger Johnson. Luis Suarez's sublime skill made the second. Uh, Mick McCarthy made a double change at the break, and within moments, Stephen Fletcher had pulled a goal back since then it's been end-to-end -end chances for Doyle and O'Hara for Wolves Andy Carroll hit the upright with a header Lucas had a shot from just outside the box which fizzed wide and Stuart Downing saw a shot turned behind by Wayne Hennessy you just sense there is another goal in this one which way uh, I wouldn't really want to bet still Liverpool 2 Wolves 1 here Thank you very much. Six in five now for Stephen Doris and our both are two on up at Brecon in Scottish League Two. And get the bunting out at Ashton Gate. Bristol City has scored a home goal in the league for the first time this season. Brett Pittman, the man who got it, they are level with Nigel Pearson's hull. It's been a cracking game at St James's Park this afternoon. Hat-tricks, red cards, Steve Sutton has enjoyed it all. Yes, a hat-trick for Denver Bar for Newcastle. Newcastle lead by three goals to one. Bar ending that uh, Newcastle uh, jinx with Blackburn. Remember, Blackburn on five successive wins at St James's. Not today, though, unless it's another remarkable comeback from them. Bar with two goals in the first half, another one in the in the second. Hoylett with uh, a reply for, for Blackburn, but really that's all they've shown. And Martin Olsen, second yellow, he got a red on 70 minutes. But perhaps one of the biggest cheers of the afternoon, despite Newcastle, Castle's three goals. Hatem Ben Arfa reintroduced to uh, Premier League football on the 73rd minute. He's on as a substitute almost a year after injury forced him off at uh, Manchester City. Newcastle three, Blackburn one. And on the subject of uh, people coming back from injuries, Didier Drogba has just come on for Chelsea. And it looks like Steven Steven Gerrard. Gerrard is mm. just about to come on at Anfield because he made a substitute appearance in the Carling Cup during the week when they won at Brighton. Right, let's check in at the DW Stadium. Uh, Wigan didn't do themselves any favours. They got it back to 2-1 and then were reduced to 10 men. James Mason. Did Mark Wigan Athletic won Tottenham Hotspur to a scoreline a lot closer than it should be though because after thumping Liverpool 4 0 last week, Tottenham started here in ravenous fashion, racing into a two goal lead and they really should have accrued more. Raphael van der Vaart got there first, a fine left footed strike before Gareth Bale made it two, a gracefully headed uh, strike, well, gra gracefully headed header with a, from a Luka Modric corner and Spurs looked like capable of scoring every time they attacked. But shortly after the break, Wigan clawed themselves back into the game when Mohamed Diaby back in the side today struck from the edge of the area and Steve Gahuri, as you say, has since left the field for the Latics. His two yellow cards making his side's task so much harder. Wigan won, Spurs two. So the only goalless game at the moment in the Premier League at the Hawthorns, Ivan Gaskell. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, inside the last ten minutes here, the first half really best forgotten, but for the record, Fulham uh, on top in a sea of mediocrity. Kasami with a goal dubiously disallowed. West Brom much better, though, after the break. Adam Wingy with a goal disallowed as well. He should also have scored when cleaned through a fine pass from Malumbu, but uh, Adam Wingy shot straight at Schwarzer. Clint Dempsey saw a volley diverted onto a West Prom post, and Brian Ruiz off the bench has just poked a rebound onto a post after Foster spilled Reese's free kick. Ruiz, you might have thought, would have Ruiz on his shirt. Actually has Brian on his shirt, and after that miss, what you might describe as the strife of Brian. Our oh, Broth's lead at Brecon didn't last very long, did it? It's two all there, and Ross County are taking the lead at Wraith in Scottish Division 1. And the leaders in the Championship are back on level terms at Turf Moor. Tony Lockwood. Yes, it's Burnley 1, Southampton 1. Nigel Atkins' decision to bring Morgan Schneiderlin off the bench has proved effective.
Schneidlin on with real impact, crashing the ball home from close in. It followed intense Saints pressure. Lambert with a header that came back off the other side of the crossbar. Adam Molano heading wide, a glaring miss from a player of real talent. This after Charlie Austin had given Burnley the lead, a side that's towards the wrong end of the table, but a showing that really shows they've got lots of confidence in this uh, side of theirs. They've played some good football, but Southampton, the leaders, showing real spirit. Back level at 1-1. Aberdeen are looking for their first away win in the SPL this season. It doesn't look like they're going to get it at Fir Park, where Motherwell have grabbed a late goal. Robert McHugh, six minutes from time, has put Stuart McCall's side ahead there. If Southampton draw at Burnley, then Middlesbrough could go top of the Championship tonight if they beat Ipswich which they aren't doing at the moment. Martin Emerson. Yes, yeah, still nil-nil here. Scott MacDonald, though, has had numerous chances in this second half. He's just put a header into the side netting when it was probably easier to score. And a few minutes ago, he turned Carlos Edwards in the box, but just side-footed tamely towards the keeper. At the other end, Jason Scotland's rattled the post and had one deflected narrowly wide. Two very good chances in the first half for Chopra and Sonko. Chopra volleying straight at the keeper from about six yards out and Sonko putting the ball wide. Remember, Ipswich started this one with the worst defence in the championship and Borough have scored in all seven so far this season but with uh, 10 minutes to go it's still nil-nil. So that means the big winners at the top of the championship at the moment are Derby, Andrew James. Yes, Derby three, Millwall nil, Derby really in the first class show today. They've scored their three goals, Bryson and Hendrick before half-time, Steve Davis with a third goal just after but it could so easily have been five. Millwall haven't won in six, haven't scored in five and they don't look like doing so uh, today. Derby three, Millwall nil. Let's head into the SPL. The early game took place at Dunfermline. Rangers... Easy winners at East End Park. Four goals to nil, two in the first half through Carlos Bocanegra and Morris Edu, and then two in the second half through Stephen Naismith. It increased their lead to seven points at the top of the SPL, which is a gap that Celtic are trying to cut down. They're taking on Inverness. Ian Turner is watching them. Four and a half minutes left, still Celtic to Inverness nil. It's been a pretty flat second half in truth. Inverness have been doing most of the pressing and despite the Celtic defensive frailties, Inverness just really failing to trouble Fraser Forster in the Celtic goal. The goals have come from Joe Ledley and James Forrest in the first half. By then, by half-time, Celtic had done their work and they will reduce that Rangers lead back to four points. Air put Hart out of the uh, League Cup in Scotland during the week. They are bottom of League One, but they've taken the lead against Queen of the South through Mark Roberts. Albion have got one back against Canonby, 2-1. There and let's find out about Motherwell's late goal at Fir Park. Brian McLaughlin. Yeah, Robert McHugh with his first goal of the season. He was only on the park three or four minutes before striking what could be a winner, a late winner for Motherwell. Terrific solo effort driving down the right hand side and inside the Aberdeen box before hitting a left foot shot beyond Gonzalez and into the back of the net. Just two and a half minutes left for play at Fir Park. It's Motherwell one, Aberdeen nil. Looks like it's all over for Kilmarnock. St Mirren have grabbed a third. Nigel Hasselbank with that goal. St Mirren three, Kilmarnock nil. Back to the lunchtime kickoff in the Premier League. Manchester City two, Everton nil was how it finished. Both managers spoke afterwards to Steve Wilson. Everton has a good team, uh, good players, and uh, it's difficult to beat them every time. I don't have the same tools as what Manchester City have got, so I have to work with what we've got. And to try and get results, and I've got to say the players done a brilliant job today. They came really close, and uh, you know I have to praise them for how they went about their job. <laughs> Made it very hard in defensive phase. Uh, for us, uh, was uh, was difficult to find a good solution. But we had uh, we always had the ball. Uh, we had uh, we shooting goal him a lot of times. Uh, we were really unlucky in the first half, but the second half uh, went better. I think today we have to give credit to James and, and, and for Mario because if it wasn't for them, maybe the game would have stayed at nil-nil and, uh, and we need players like this. We need players on the bench to make the difference when they, when they came in and, uh, and that's what they did today. So that's good and uh, you show that everyone is concerned about uh, the result of the team and that's a good thing. That's a really good thing, positive and, uh, and we hope we can maintain this form. I think it's harsh. I think the first goal uh, is given a throw into Manchester City. When you look at it closely, it actually comes back off Nasri's shin pad and goes out for a throw into us. Light Vines was very unhappy, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, was, and that's what he said. And I think overall, I think today we found, found you know, the, the way the officials sort of treat the players and 
threat us. We found it really difficult to take today. You know, difficult to talk to. You know, difficult to. The players found the whole thing a, a strain, and so did we with the fourth official as well. We found him very much the same. Three Premier League goals for Swansea last weekend, and now one for them this afternoon. Tony Husband. Probably just a consolation at this stage in the final minutes of the game, Mark, but uh, Ashley Williams has scored a first goal away from home in the Premier League for Swansea. He's headed in Mark Gower's free kick from the right-hand side. So 3-1 now with three minutes to play. I told you that Steven Gerrard was on at Anfield for Liverpool, but are they hanging on a little bit against Wolves? Nas Premji. Uh, they certainly are a little, but Dirk Cowd is uh, through here and he's got Gerrard in support. I'll just break off Gerrard into the box, but that's defended well by Wolves. Yes, they are hanging on a little and Gerrard himself nearly got on the score sheet, heading down and lashing a shot which was from distance over into the cop. And uh, they are looking to preserve this slender advantage that they've got. Wolves are trying to press and harry and trying to find an equaliser, but so far to no avail. Liverpool defending stoutly. It's Liverpool to Wolves. One. Leighton Orient have got one back there, bottom of League One. Kevin Lisby, five minutes from time at Huddersfield. The Huddersfield side who, if they avoid defeat this afternoon, take their club Great record goal. unbeaten run to 35 league games. To the Emirates, Arsenal were 2 0 up on 10 man Bolton. Have they extended that lead? Jonathan Ledger. It's now 3 0. And do you know what I've seen? A smile on Arsene Wenger's face. Would you believe it? Alex Song managed to wheedle his way through and find himself on the edge of the area. And as the ball came back to him, his sweet right-footed shot beat the despairing dive of Jaskalainen. Arsenal 3, Bolton 0. They'll put that on tape, won't they, and just play it again and again, because they haven't heard that for ages. Arsenal will be 12th this evening if everything stays as it is. Bolton, though, and let's talk, but we haven't mentioned Bolton really. Else. Bolton will be rooted to the bottom of the Premier League this evening. Yeah, I mean, I, I did say at the start of the season that I thought it might be a long, hard season for Bolton. Um, I've got to say that it, it, it's difficult to know exactly where to pitch them. They didn't spend an awful lot of money, got a couple of free transfers in. You think the players who've left, you know, you remember Almanda last year, how he started the season. You know, there's, there's nobody like that who started the season for them this year. And you do wonder exactly where they're going to go. And, and obviously, I think the expectation is still reasonably high at, at, at Bolton. So it's, it's not... It's not. A, it's, it's, it's a difficult place to to sort of try and pitch them at this stage, but obviously things have got to improve. Okay, it's a phrase that's used a lot. Let's talk about one of Steve's former clubs, uh, St Andrews. We're going to now, where there's been a goal for Birmingham, I think. Steve Lee. Yes, Birmingham won, Barnsley won. Chris Burke, the Scottish midfielder for Birmingham, has curled one in from the edge of the box. There'd been a little rally by Birmingham latterly with uh, Nico Zizic coming on as substitute and uh, Marlon King going close. They've now got the goal from Chris Burke after Jacob Butterfield scored a terrific goal for Barnsley from 30 yards in the first half. It would have given Barnsley their first win here in 11 years, but it looks like Birmingham have rescued a point. To the keep mode next, Doncaster winless in the league going into this game, but with a new man in charge in Dean Saunders. Has it worked, Alan Biggs? Well, so far, 1-0, a couple of minutes to go. Mark, as so often happens when a club changes its manager, a big lucky break. 19 games without a win in the league, an unwanted club record beckoning, but what could be the winning goal? A 25-yard strike from John Oster took a huge deflection, which was very harsh on Palace, but Doncaster's second half of performance, much stouter, has Deserved it, I think. 1-0, they lead. Just gone through on the video printer. Bournemouth have got a late goal... Uh, Harlepool, rather. Late goal at Bournemouth. That will be a fifth successive league win for them. They lead by two goals to one. Back to the Championship. Mark Bishop at the Rico Arena watching Coventry Reading. Sea of Blue, I don't mean Coventry fans, just 12,309 at the Rico. The club suffering their worst start to a season in 12 years means plenty of empty blue seats. A shame because uh, the crowd, majority of it, who stayed away, uh, missed out on a Gary McSheffrey rocket. One minute, 41 seconds straight from the kickoff. Church equalised from 10 yards and then Murphy with a brilliant save to deny Noel Hunt's spot kick. We've had a string of fine saves from Federici denying Jukovic, McSheffrey and Bell. Highly entertaining game. It's going to win 1-1.
Dagenham and Redbridge have got a goal back through Oliver Lee, but it looks like it'll be a fifth successive league defeat for John Stills' men at Northampton. Is it all over at Celtic Park? Have Neil Lennon's side cut the gap on Rangers? Ian Turner. Yes, Celtic ensured Rangers' seven-point lead in the SPL was short-lived with this unspectacular win over bottom club Inverness. Terry Butcher won't be too unhappy over this defeat because his side played well despite falling to first-half strikes from Joe Ledley and James Forrest. At Celtic Park, it finished Celtic 2, Inverness 0. And the final whistle has gone as well at Fir Park. Another disappointing afternoon for Craig Brown, Brian McLaughlin. It certainly is, Chappers. Motherwell 1, Aberdeen 0. Motherwell end a run of three straight defeats, just about deserving all three points. A terrific solo effort by Robert McHugh, chasing a long ball that they had no right to get to before firing a left-foot shot into the bottom corner of the net. Aberdeen's woes continue as Motherwell go marching on. Final score at Fir Park. Motherwell 1, Aberdeen 0. Our Bryce win at Breakin means they'll stay top of League 2 this evening in Scotland. Morton will stay top of League 1. Back to the Championship in England. Hamish Marshall at Ashton Gate. Is it uh, looking like it's going to finish all square here between Bristol City and Hull? It's looking like it. We're in the dying throes of this game. The last uh, few seconds of stoppage time. It's Bristol City 1, Hull City 1. Bristol City's drought for goals is over at home. Brett Pittman scoring their first home goal of the season with a looping header. He came on after Hull had gone in front through Robert Corrin and the Tigers had seen on course for a fourth successive win. If they do, it'll be last ditch. They've got a corner now. Time's almost up. It's 1 1. Time is up at Anfield. Liverpool have beaten Wolves by two goals to one. One of them came from that man, Luis Suarez. Here's Naz Premji. Liverpool 2, Arsenal Wolves over. 1, Kenny Dalglish's men return to winning ways in the Premier League, courtesy of goals from Charlie Adam via a Roger Johnson deflection and a super strike from Luis Suarez, his goal, real quality strike, Enrique with a sublime ball over the top, Suarez raced onto it, toyed with a Wolves defender in the six-yard box before lashing home. Sub Steve Fletcher pulled a goal back for Wolves, they then had chances through Doyle and O'Hara. At the other end, Andy Carroll hit the post with a header. Downing and Lucas also went very close to extending Liverpool's lead. It was backs to the wall stuff in the final few minutes as the visitors piled men forward, but the home side stood firm and Steven Gerrard returned to Premier League action from the bench after six months out. So all is well again at Anfield. It's finished here, Mark. Liverpool 2. Wolves one. It's just gone through on the video print of Big Ben Chorley equalising for Leighton Orient. Huddersfield to Leighton Orient 2. To the Emirates X, where there have been goals, smiles and a clean sheet. Is that true, Jonathan, em Jonathan Ledyard? It is, and Robin Van Persie, who was substituted to the applause of the Emirates crowd, has just gone and claimed the match ball. Because for him, this is a special occasion. Not just because Arsenal have won, not just it's a welcome three points after a really shaky first part of the season and also a first half but because he scored his 99th and 100th goals for Arsenal overall. And it was his goal early in the second half which really then set the tone. Arsenal threw off the shackles, the confidence returned, David Wheater was sent off for Bolton, and thereafter there was only one winner. Percy added his second, then we had Song also popping in for three. Walcott should have had at least a hat-trick. He didn't, Capello left, and Arsenal will leave happy too. 3 nil winners. Last time Chelsea played a promoted side at home, Didier Drogba was carried off injured. Things are a lot happier for him today. Tony Husband. Yes, the full-time whistle has actually just gone here at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea have beaten Swansea by four goals to one. A goal with virtually the last kick of the game by the returning Didier Drogba, a second-half substitute, combining with Florent Malouda to score from just inside the box on the turn. Just gone through there. Bradley Phillips, the sixth of the season, means Charlton. The League One leaders are now 3-1 up on Chesterfield. In the first half at the Rico Arena, there was a missed penalty. In the second half, there's been another. Mark Bishop. Unbelievable, Chappers. It's finished Coventry City 1, Reading 1. So Jeff Hurst used to say, no excuse for missing a penalty. We've had two misses at the Rico. First half, well, it was Noel Hunt's uh, goal-bound effort, goal, uh, effort, brilliantly saved by Murphy. And then in stoppage time, Coventry had a penalty. Lukas Jukovic stepped up to the spot, but ballooned the ball over the crossbar. 1-1, one, one, it's finished. Thank you very much, Mark. Final whistle has gone at the DW Stadium and James Mason Spurs hung on. They did just about Chappers. Wigan Athletic won, Tottenham Hotspur two. So three Premier League wins on the bounce for Harry Redknapp's men, but they should have won this encounter by three or four goals. They were rampant in the first half, 
but only scored twice. Raphael van der Vaart got the first, a fine left-footed strike, before Gareth Bale made it two, heading home a Luka Modric corner. And Spurs looked capable of scoring every time they attacked. But shortly after the break, Wigan were gifted a lifeline. Mohamed Diame with a right-footed shot from the edge of the area, making it 2-1. Roberto Martinez urged his side forward for an equaliser, but their hopes evaporated when Steve Gohiri saw red for a second yellow card. And it's another league defeat for the Spaniard. Wigan Athletic 1, Tottenham Hotspur 2. Portsmouth were going for their 400th home win in second-level football in England. What a fantastic stat that is. And they left it late to do it. Andy Barwell. Well, they've got the three points, Mark. It's finished 1-0 to Portsmouth. The drama very, very late on. Norwegian Eric Hoosklip snatched it in stoppage time for Portsmouth. A largely forgettable game until that brilliantly taken goal from the Norwegian. Eric the Viking is taking the plaudits. Portsmouth 1, Blackpool 0 has gone at St James's Park. An entertaining afternoon for Steve Sutton and Denver Barr is the new idol of Tyneside. Yes, he is. The headlines, Mark. Denver Barr gets a hat-trick. Newcastle remain unbeaten this season. Hatton Ben Arthur returns a year after injury and Blackburn's Martin Olsen gets a, a second yellow. Barr's two first-half goals set Newcastle on their way. David Hoylett's uh, first just before half-time gave Blackburn some hope, but it was Barr's looping header ten minutes into the second half that put the result beyond doubt and Blackburn really had nowhere to go after Martin Olsen was sent off midway through the half for a second yellow. Yellow card. Newcastle three, Blackburn one. Blackburn in the bottom three this evening. Below them, West Brom, just above them, Fulham. And they fought out a goal to draw the Hawthorns, watched by Ivan Gaskell. Yes, and pretty much as bad as it sounds, these two have made their worst ever start to a Premier League season, so excitement wasn't, wasn't exactly at fever pitch prior to this one. The game rather lived down to expectation. Both sides managed to find the net, but in both cases they found the flag up for offside too. Fulham struck uh, a post twice. West Brom missed the rare chances that came their way, and Brunt late on hit the woodwork too. Fulham still without a win, and rather like their season so far, it was all a bit of a slog here. Unlikely to feature very early on match of the day tonight, I fancy. <laughs> yeah, I kind of agree with you. Right, Burnley, Southampton in the Championship next. How did the leaders do, Tony Lockwood? The leaders were held mark at Turf Moor and they had to come from behind to salvage a point. Burnley's opener came from Charlie Austin early in the second half, heading the ball home from close in his fifth of the season. A productive campaign for the striker. Southampton rallying, Ricky Lambert headed against the bar, Lalana's glaring miss, but substitute Morgan Schneidler, the unlikely hero, crashing in the equaliser. 1-1 it finished. Uh, Middlesbrough couldn't take advantage of that slip by Southampton. Martin Emerson. Finish nil-nil here. The best chances of the match really going to Ipswich. Ibrahim Asonko with a header in the first half that should have gone in. And Michael Chopra with a volley straight at the keeper from about six yards out. Early in the second half, Jason Scotland hit the post from about 18 yards away and saw another shot deflected. At the other end, Scott MacDonald had the best of the two chances. A good turn in the box, leaving Carlos Edwards in his wake. Side-footed it at the keeper and then saw a header hit the side netting. Borough still unbeaten, but this is the first league game they haven't scored in this season. Looks like Notts County are going to take the points there, doesn't it? Meadow Lane, Sam Sodger with a late goal. Notts County 2, Rochdale 0. Let me point you in the direction of live sport coming your way on the BBC. Uh, this evening, uh, 10 past five, so what, only 10 minutes or so. Uh, Gabby there for Watford against Nottingham Forest in the Championship, live from Vicarage Road on BBC Two. And if you're an early riser, you can catch some great sport tomorrow, 7.45am, also on BBC Two. It's the Berlin Marathon, Paula Radcliffe's first race since the birth of her second child. If she's going to qualify for next year's Olympics, this race is going to be her best chance. And speaking of stars of 2012, Mark Cavendish is the favourite for the road race tomorrow at the World Cycling Championships. If he wins, he'll be the first British cyclist to hold that title to, since Tommy Simpson in 1965. That's live on the Red Butter from 9am. Highlights on BBC Two tomorrow afternoon at 10 past three. Go Cav. Right, to Derby next, Pride Park. A good afternoon for the home side, Andrew James. Yes, a convincing display from Derby, Mark. Derby 3, Millwall 0. They led at half-time by goals from Bryson and Hendrick. Steve Davis, the top scorer, got a third just after half-time. And Millwall, who hadn't won in six before today, hadn't scored in five before today, rarely looked like breaking that record. Derby 3, Millwall 0. Derby third this evening in the Championship. West Ham... Fourth, they beat Peterborough by a goal to nil. Mark Noble getting that from the penalty spot. This is final score. Time for the classified football results now, here on BBC One with Tim Gudgeon.
hand, a busy afternoon in the Barclays Premier League ends like this. Arsenal 3, Bolton Wanderers 0. Chelsea 4, Swansea City 1. Liverpool 2, Wolves 1. Manchester City 2, Everton 0. Newcastle United 3, Blackburn Rovers 1. Stoke City and Manchester United kick off at 5.30. West Brom 0, Fulham 0. And Wigan Athletic 1, Tottenham Hotspur 2. In the Empire Championship, Birmingham City 1, Barnsley 1. Bristol City 1, Hull City 1. Burnley 1, Southampton 1. Coventry City 1, Reading 1. Derby County 3, Millwall 0. Doncaster Rovers 1, Crystal Palace 0. Middlesbrough 0, Ipswich Town 0. Portsmouth 1, Blackpool 0. Watford and Nottingham Forest kick off at quarter past five. West Ham United one, Peterborough United nil. In the League One, AFC Bournemouth one, Hartlepool United two. Bury nil, Milton Keynes Dons nil. Carlisle United one, Stevenage nil. Charlton Athletic three, Chesterfield one. Colchester United one, Walsall nil. Huddersfield Town two, Late Orient 2. Notts County 2, Rochdale 0. Oldham Athletic 0, Brentford 2. Preston North End 2, Tramway Rovers 1. Scunthorpe United 2, Yeovil Town 1. Sheffield Wednesday 3, Exeter City 0. And Wickham Wanderers 1, Sheffield United 0. In League 2, Aldershot Town 0, Crawley Town 1. Bradford City 1, AFC Wimbledon, 2. Cheltenham Town, 0. Hereford United, 0. Crew Alexandra, 1. Port Vale, 1. Gillingham, 3. Burton Albion, 1. Morecambe, 2. Bristol Rovers, 3. Northampton Town, 2. Dagenham and Redbridge, 1. Oxford United, 1. Accrington Stanley, 1. Plymouth Argyle, 2. Macclesfield Town, 0. Rotherham United 0, Southend United 4, Shrewsbury Town 2, Torquay United 0, and Swindon Town 4, Barnet 0. In the Blue Square Premier, Alfreton Town 2, Edfleet United 2, Bath City 0, Kettering Town 1, Cambridge United 2, Darlington 0, Fleetwood Town 2, AFC Telford United 2, Grimsby Town 1, Wrexham 3, Hayes and Yedding United 2, Gateshead 3, Lincoln City 1, Forest Green Rovers 1, Mansfield Town 0, Kidderminster 3, Newport County 2, Barrow 2, Southport 0, Braintree Town 4, Tamworth 1, Stockport County 1, and York City 3, Luton 0. In the Clydesdale Bank Scottish Premier League, Celtic 2, Inverness Caledonian Thistle 0, Dunfermline 0, Rangers 4, Hibernian 3, Dundee United 3, Motherwell 1, Aberdeen 0, and St Mirren 3, Kilmarnock 0. In the Arnbury Scottish Division 1, Air United 1, Queen of the South 0, Dundee 0, Hamilton Academical 1, Greenock Morton 3, Falkirk 2, Livingston 2, Partick Thistle 1, and Wraith Rovers 0, Ross County 1. In Scottish Div 2, Airdrie United 1, Stirling Albion 1, Brechin City 2, Harbroath 3, Cowdenbeath 2, Albion Rovers 1, Forfra Athletic 0, Dumbarton 2, Stenhouse Muir 2, East Fife 1. And Scottish Div 3, Alloa Athletic 4, Montrose 2. Allen Athletic 3, East Stirlingshire 0. Clyde 1, Berwick Rangers 4. Peterhead 1, Queen's Park 1. And Stranra 1, Elgin City 0. The Welsh Premier, Airbus UK Broughton 0, the New Saints 0, latest score. And in the Carling Premiership, Cliftonville 2, Donegal Celtic 3. Crusaders 0, Porter Down 3. Dungannon Swifts, 0. Lisbon Distillery, 2. Glenavon, 1. Coleraine, 0. Glentoran, 2. 
Ballymena United 4 and Linfield 3, Carrick 0. The tables are as follows after all those results. Barclays Premier League, Manchester City are back above Neighbours United for a few hours at least. Roberto Mancini's men move a point clear prior to Manchester United's trip to Stoke in this evening's tea time kickoff. Chelsea and Newcastle both want to stay third and fourth respectively. Liverpool up to fifth. It's a rough trot for Bolton, who slumped to the foot of the table following defeat at fellow strugglers Arsenal. Uh, Arsene Wenger's men up to 12th. West Brom and Fulham both climb a place following their draw. With the point for Martin Yol's side, enough for them to move out of the bottom three. Blackburn slide into the drop zone after defeat. No change to the top two in the Championship, with both Southampton and Middlesbrough drawing. Nigel Clough's derby barge their way up from fourth to third with victory over Millwall. At the foot of the table, Doncaster's fortunes may have changed with their first win of the season, but they're still bottom. Bristol City's draw with Hull moves them above Nottingham Forest, who are about to kick off at Watford on BBC Two. Leaders Charlton extend their advantage to three points following victory for them and defeat for Sheffield United. However, Danny Wilson's side hang on to second place after Huddersfield threw away a two-goal lead to draw at home to Leighton Orient. Bottom club, Orient, remain winless despite that late point at Huddersfield. They're five points from safety. Exeter, Berry, Rochdale complete the relegation zone. Scunthorpe up to five places uh, and are 16th after their first league win of the campaign. Morecambe still top of League Two on goal difference despite suffering their first defeat in nine at home to Bristol Rovers. Shrewsbury sixth win in seven, seeds them go second. Southend's emphatic victory at Rotherham moves them up from sixth to third. Uh, Rotherham drop from second to fifth. Plymouth stay bottom but close the gap on those above them with their first win of the season. No movement for Hereford, Bradford and Barnet who all failed to win. Wrexham may have lost Dean Saunders to Doncaster yesterday, but they'll end the week in top spot after winning at Grimsby. That's because the previous leaders, Luton, lost heavily at York. At the bottom, Bath lost for an eighth time and continue to prop up the division. Newport, Ebbsfleet and Alfreton all drew today and complete the relegation spot. And Rangers' victory over Dunfermline in the lunchtime kickoff maintained their four point lead over Celtic, who beat Inverness, Caledonia, and Thistle. St Mirren made the biggest day of the day, climbing from ninth to fifth with victory against Kilmarnock. At the bottom, Hibbs' draw with Dundee United sees them move above Aberdeen. So, tonight, match of the day, BBC One, 10 25, plenty of goals, plenty of red cards in the company of Gary and Alan and Loro. And it'll be followed by the Football League show uh, tonight, 11.50. Steve will be alongside Manish for that. And then match of the day two tomorrow includes QPR against Aston Villa. That is a 10 o'clock kickoff. Just got some uh, team news from Manchester United at Stoke in the tea time game. There is no Wayne Rooney for Manchester United this evening. Dimitar Berbatov and Javier Hernandez will start up front. Thank you very much for Garth and for Steve. We're still on the red button if you want to continue watching us there. Uh, if you want to phone in about your team's performance, myself and Jason Roberts, 606 on Five Live in an hour's time. And if you want to watch the live football now, Watford against Forest is on BBC Two with Gabby from me. Bye-bye.